Welcome to this review of Kronos Before the Ashes, a game released back in December 2020. In this review we're going to want to look at some of the strengths and weaknesses of Kronos. My general, my very general feeling is that it's an okay game. I didn't feel that it was amazing, but it but it's simple and does what it does quite well. So let's begin with the obvious the obvious things first. So it's it's made in the genre of the the dead dark souls mold. So we can expect that to filter into the combat system. And combat here is quite dark soulsy. So it's one of the major differences is that it's very slow. The combat feels slow and sluggish in the sense that you really take some time to swing your weapon at your at the enemy and sometimes the enemies also take a time to engage in their attack animations um, and it and initially this feels quite strange but the more you play and the more you get into the combat yourself the more you become accustomed to it but it is there nonetheless the combat is quite slow but that said, perhaps due to the slowness and due to the weapons that you have, the combat feels quite crunchy. So when you hit enemies, it really you really feel the connection. Regarding weapons, there are several types. It's a small variety, but there is variety nonetheless. You've got your spear, you've got your axe, you've got your, your sword, and you have your pommel. These you can switch on switch at the fly on the fly and you can upgrade each of them how do upgrades work well you acquire shards dragon shards from the world often just drop down dropped by enemies you've slain and you can use these to upgrade each weapon this brings us to the stamina you have a stamina bar much like you have in dark uh, dark souls um except the stamina stamina bar isn't connected to your melee attacks so attacking enemies doesn't drain the bar the bar is solely there for when you deflect and block that is when you will your stamina bar will deplete and of course you need to keep an eye on the bar so that when um, it does get to zero that you avoid enemy attacks lest you incur damage there is um, some done, some variation to the bat, the combat in the sense that you have power, a powers ability that you can activate. There are several several of these abilities depending on an orb you sort of pick up. You've got your fire, your sun, and your shock, and each of these you can you can equip one at a time, and each obviously has its unique properties. So I use the fire orb and this would ignite my weapon and it would also ignite my weapon if I did say a perfect dodge. The bosses in the game we there are several um, we will talk a bit about this when it comes to the cons of Kronos. Um, the level design is very linear so the game sort of funnels you from A to B there's very little variation um, the only variation would be the puzzles that the game throws your way. Regarding puzzles, you get you get mediocre puzzles to really difficult puzzles. They'll often require some guesswork. Some you'll just get lucky with trial and error. You might, if you don't like puzzles in a game, you're definitely not going to enjoy this part of Kronos because there are quite a few. Progress is also something worth talking about you can progress you can as I noted you can upgrade your weapons but you also upgrade your character so it doesn't quite work in the same way as Dark Souls but in Kronos you 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 acquire experiment uh, experience from enemies you slay and eventually your level XP bar will um, level up and then that'll give you two ability points that you can spend on and ability so you have four different areas of abilities you can upgrade you have your strength which obviously is how hard you hit and the damage you deal 
you have your agility, you have your arcane, and you have your vitality. Agility helps with blocking and how much damage your blocking can take. And of course, agility, um, of course, um, vitality is how much life you have. So there's a little bit of progression in Kronos regarding character upgrades. Also very interesting is that every time you die in Kronos, your character ages a year. So your beginning point is at the age of 18. And this does throw some interesting aspects into the, the mix. So for example, if you, if you grow too old, for example, you can you are prevented from upgrading your strength and you come to emphasize more of your arcane ability. Um, I died perhaps 20 or so times, so I finished the game at the age of around 45-ish. Um, there are some cool abilities that you unlock the more you age. So by the age of 30, uh, I unlocked a, an ability in which my deflection was increased. And that's how that part of the game works. There are orbs or like diamond-like uh, structures or objects that sort of resemble the bonfire in Dark Souls. So these, these don't quite work the same as the bonfire in Dark Souls. You can, their, their function is pretty much limited to fast travel between different objects and the ability to revive if you die the enemies well when you die your your orbs uh, your healing orbs um, replenish but you cannot return to the stone the object and get replenished health or replenished healing orbs We can now get to some of the weaknesses of Kronos. Um, I think quite glaring here is the story or lack thereof. There's basically no story here in Kronos um, other than the fact that you need to kill four bosses before you can fight the final boss of the game. There's no background context to your character. I don't know anything about my character. He's pretty much just a vessel to hold a weapon that you can swing at enemies. So don't expect much on this side. Another weakness and weakness is the boss or the boss fights. Bosses aren't difficult at all. I think um, I died perhaps twice, two to three times on bosses per boss. The final boss also was about three times I died before I finished them off. It's very possible to beat the bosses in your first attempt. So this is definitely not on the level of Dark Souls or say some of the more tougher titles out there that throw difficult bosses your way. Also a bit of a weakness or a bit of annoyance for me was the healing orbs. So you unlock healing orbs as you play through. These you you heal. They're sort of like the flasks in Dark Souls. Except it's much slower here. So in combat you can be damaged and you can attempt to heal yourself through consuming a heal, a, an orb. But it's the animation is very, very slow. So if your enemy is reasonably fast or quick you're going to be hit and probably die i died numerous times like this which can grate a bit there's not much in this in the sense of law there are a couple of books around the world you can read um, to access a bit more context but it's nothing that's going to really blow you away regarding bugs i didn't run into too many um, I had one crash, I came across some enemies that sort of bugged out and just stopped moving, but all around the game ran quite well. Graphically, the game looks, it's not going to win any awards, but it's got a, a, a sort of decent 
cartoon, cartoony animation style to it. Um, it's not going to win any awards, but it's definitely not bad. So just to draw some conclusions, Kronos Before the Ashes is a Dark Souls-like game. And I think I can recommend it to fans of that series, especially hardcore and diehard fans. But I can also definitely say there are better games out there in this mold that one can play and spend time with. I think if you're just looking to grind through a Dark Souls-like game and you don't mind a bit of average overall um, feel, you can give Kronos a go. Um, so I can recommend it to them. But to general players, I, I, I would say you can... You can get definitely get better games out there that you can play. And yeah, that's the review of Kronos.